Hey fellow YouTubers, Roland Martin here. Listen, I've been, I get, I get a lot of your, uh, your requests and your, uh, your comments. One of the comments is, what are your favorite lures? Now I, I travel all over the country and I've been a professional fisherman for a long, long time. And so I've seen a lot of changes in the way lures are, are categorized. In other words, 30 or 40 years ago, it might have been a, something like a hula popper. But, or a jitterbug or something really old. But now there's a whole new line, whole brand new fresh line of brand new baits, and I'm gonna give you my top 10. Now I'm kind of a power fisherman. I like to fish South Florida. I like to fish the heavy cover, the weeds, the logs. I like to fish heavy line. I like to fish heavy rocks and logs and, and weeds. And, and so I, I'm not that open water fisherman. I'm more of the heavy cover power fisherman. So that's kind of gonna, I'm gonna kind of bend towards talking about big fish in heavy cover, whether it's the, the stick ups of Lake Mead in the back end or it's some place in California, some clear lake uh, underneath a boat dock with a big fish. It could be a place in Connecticut underneath a log or a beaver just had cut down. It doesn't make any difference. You're gonna find heavy cover and big bass all over the country, uh, everywhere that you look. So I'm gonna start with the top 10. The top 10 lures that I would re really say you really need to be able to master and fish if you fish all over like I do, start with the jerkbait. Hey, let's, let's go down memory lane a little bit. Let's talk about something in jerkbait fishing that you might remember, you might not remember, and that is years ago there was the Rapala. Back in the 60s there was a Rapala, and back in 76 the Rapala company came to me and said, Roland, will you work for us? I was a fresh off the tournament trail and winning a few tournaments. And they had me, the first thing I had to, to work with was this number 11 Rapala. And I, I looked at it, I said, I, this is, a, this is a, a jerk bait of some sort. It's a floating minnow. And I said, I don't know if I can catch fish on it or not. I like to catch big fish. I like to fish heavy cover, but I don't know if I can do it. I started taking this number 11 Rapala here on Lake Okeechobee, for example, catching seven and eight, nine pound bass. I even caught an 11 pound bass on this back about 35 years ago on that little bitty uh, Rapala lure. It was the most famous of all lures. In fact, they rented them out back in the 60s when they first came out with them. There were only a few of them around and they came from, uh, uh, they came from Finland and they were handmade and hand carved and hand tested and hand, hand, hand tested in big tanks individually. Anyway, these lures would rent for, I don't know, $25 a day. You had to put like a $100 deposit down. There was such a demand on Arapala back in the 60s that people would take the $100 deposit and, 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 and keep the lure. And it was costing them $100 back 50, 60 years ago. So you can imagine what, what a craze this was. Well, jerk baits have come a long ways and I still use the wrap a little bit, but I've kind of progressed a little bit later. And now we say the, some of the other lures I have, I have uh, a variety of lures like this bomber. So, uh, actually that's a, that's a long A bomber. That's a really, really good jerk bait. I started using it years ago at Lake Okeechobee and it's just fantastic, not only for bass, but, but for uh, uh, saltwater fish. Now here's a bomber that's also made on, on a special occasion for, I think it's uh, a special run of bombers that uh, Steve Daniels kind of put me on this one. It's a very popular lure for, for swim baits and uh, rather uh, jerk baits on the top. Now there's another set of lures I have, if I can find them, is my, they're my uh, Spro jerk baits. Now most recently one of the jerk baits that I've been using a lot is the Spro, the Mike McClellan series. It's really a big, a big time deal. There's also the Mega Bass uh, jerk bait and basically I'm throwing it on a fairly light rod with about 14 pound test line. I'm just uh, basically just twitching it along on the top and just working it as a top water plug. Just almost a top water. Just a slow little jerk on the bottom. You notice it just barely comes up. And you can throw it, mainly an open water lure. You're throwing it, at, in this case, I'm, I'm just making a cast. But, but the point is, it's a jerk bait, and it's, it's subsurface to some degree. You can run it down up three or four feet. And it's a, it's a great big bass lure here in South Florida. And it's a takeoff, again, of the, of the original Rapala. Okay, number 10. Okay, folks, number nine. 
Number nine, I, I kind of rate a topwater plug as a number nine type of lure as far as my repertoire of, of fishing. You see me use uh, walking baits like that one, that's a, a Zara spook type. You see me using devil horses with propellers on the back. You see me using little poppers like the Pop R. That's a very, very effective lure. But this little walking bait is probably my favorite. I, that's one I handmade. I just throw it out there and just see how just back and forth, walk it back and forth. Just slow and easy. Just learn how to keep it walking. Back and forth with the walking movement. That's the deal right there. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just have to be able to walk it a little bit like that. Sometimes you can stop it, sometimes you can pause it. But anyway, that walking bait is probably the most effective for me, for big fish, here in the heavy cover. I'm throwing out the edge of lilies, at the edge of grass beds, working that kind of water. Okay, now along with that top water plug, we have a, this is like an evergreen looking thing with a little feather on the back. It walks as well. I have a whole bunch of lures that I made. I have the ones that are like a devil's horse with spinners, and I just enjoy kind of fooling with lures. Okay, crankbaits. I'm going to take you down memory lane again. I'm going to talk about a crankbait right now. I have a crankbait tied on. Uh, this isn't one that I've had anything to do with. It's just one that I like. It's a little end. It's a medium-sized crankbait, and it's good from Connecticut to California in, say, the 10 to 12-foot range. It's just a perfect thing. And, and basically, a crankbait, all you're doing is just throwing it out there. I'm using a long rod with light line and just barely cranking it down and just kind of slow rolling it along and they just load up on it. Sometimes you can pause it and you can do all kinds of things like that, but basically it's, uh, it's just making the right long cast into the right area and just slowly just kind of just walking it down and just kind of just, just slow cranking it along. Sometimes you can speed it up a little bit in the hot summer and just run it a little fast and stop it, run it a little fast and stop it. There's a lot of variations from cold water to hot water. But taking me back memory lane, let's talk about a lure that started me off on a lot of this cranking. And there's two lures here I want to talk about. Back in 1976, Rappler came to me and they said, how, how about uh, I will sponsor your television show and we'll have you help us with some lures and design some new bass baits and some, some crank baits. So uh, Yarmo Rappala, the grandson of uh, Larry Rappala, came over from Finland, he and uh, Ron Weber, and they said, okay, Roland, what, what can we design? Let's design something. So I got busy, and I designed this plug. It's called the Fat Wrap. And it's, we designed it over 40 years ago. It's a Fat Wrap. And, and it's still a good lure for today. They, they still actually sell this Fat Wrap, the Rappala does. It's still a very popular lure. This little, I'm going to tell you what, what, this little color right here, the, the, the crawdad color was absolute killer. And then when I used that same little crawdad color in a smaller size for smallmouth, it was just an absolute dynamite smallmouth lure. I've never seen a better smallmouth lure. Well, we started getting bigger and deeper with these uh, fat wraps, and now we got into really deep models that go down almost 20 foot deep. With, with light braid, uh, I could probably get this thing down almost to 18 feet deep, or 16 at least. Uh, they say that they'll run 16. And anyway, there's a whole variety of, of these really deep plugs and they're all what we call the deep diving fat wrap series that I designed. Hey, I designed them 40 years ago. Well, from there, I don't use them that much anymore because I've been with other companies. I've been with Spro, for example. I've been with all sorts of other companies. And I've used their products as well, and, and they work good too. A crankbait's a crankbait. It's a matter of where you throw it and how you retrieve it, how much, uh, what pound test line you have, and, and that type of thing. Well, that's really, really my number seven choice. My number six choice, is a chatterbait. Now let's talk about a chatterbait. What's a chatterbait? Well, if I can find some chatterbaits, I'll just show you some chatterbaits. It's really a great, great lure for the winter time down here in South Florida. We catch a lot of fish on chatterbaits in the winter time. It's not so much a hot water bait, it's more of a cold water bait. And here's one of my favorites of all times. I'll take this, this pumpkin colored chatterbait. This is the 3 eighths of an ounce series. I love it, the 3 eighths of an ounce series. I throw it on about 17 pound fluorocarbon line. Hey, that's a little swimming Cinco tail by Yamamoto. What a combination. There's been a lot of tournaments won at all over the place. Every state in the country had been producing good fish when the water temperature is slightly cool. 
this chatterbait, remember, three-eighths of an ounce. That Remember that little swimming tail? Uh, that's a really good thing. The Yamamoto makes a Zenko, and they also make this uh, swimming Zenko tail. And uh, again, uh, any color will work for me as long as it's green pumpkin. No, the black works and the uh, black and blue works, and, uh, and the other colors will work uh, as well, even white. In the springtime, sometimes there's a shad situation in these uh, early spring, and these same chatterbaits with white. The white color will sometimes really produce. Okay, now while we're talking about chatterbaits, let's go right into spinnerbaits because big spinnerbaits and chatterbaits are a lot the same. Now a spinnerbait, <laughs> going down memory lane again, is something I've had my hand in. You know, for years and years we've had uh, had lures like this, and uh, for example, look at this. That's a current model of the Roland Martin Big Bass spinnerbait. But 40 years ago, Rapala came to me and one of their divisions was Blue Fox Tackle. And Blue Fox Tackle said, Roland, let's make a big bass spinnerbait for Lake Okeechobee. And I'd been winning tournaments here on Lake Okeechobee and really doing well. So we made us the number five blades, the number six blades, the number seven blades. We made the Blue Fox model, Roland Martin Big Bass Spinnerbait. And for 20 years, we, we sold those things and now they're not being sold anymore. In the meantime, I've gone to uh, Megastrike. Hey, Megastrike has taken the same name taking the, basically the same design as my 40-year-old Roland Martin Big Bass Spinnerbait, and they may make a bass bait now called Roland Martin Big Bass Spinnerbait. Hey, it's still around. Okay, that's, and that's a really, really popular model. That's the 3 8 of an ounce uh, one. I like the little double tails to put on there. Any color will work. I like chartreuse and white. I like chartreuse. Uh, I like solid white. And that happens to have a, a, a Colorado blade, but some of them I have that have a, 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 a willow leaf blades. And basically there's about three or four ways to fish a spinnerbait. If you're on Lake Okeechobee and you're on shallow grass beds, I'm going to run heavy line and I'm going to throw it past the, the, the lily pads. I'm going to throw it past the logs and kind of, I'll a lot of times wake it on top. Watch this wake that I make. Watch this wake. Okay, I get it right on top and there's a wake. There's just, it's right underneath the surface of the water. It's making a wake. And sometimes they'll hit it on a, on a fast retrieve with the wake. Other times you have to what they call slow roll a spinnerbait. I take the bait out there, throw it out, count it down three or four or five seconds, and just barely reel it. Now when I'm barely reeling a lure like a spinnerbait, it's called slow rolling because the, the, the blade is rolling around slowly. And that's the slow roll technique. Now while I'm at it, let me just show you another lure that I'm going to throw in the same basic situation. I'm going to throw on the same rod, at the same time, I'm going to throw a buzzbait. I know a buzzbait and a spinnerbait are kind of different, but you end up throwing a buzzbait and spinnerbait on about the same situation. And that is, I went to uh, the Big Bass Spinnerbait Company, the Bobby Urich and the uh, Mega Strike people, and we made the Cavitron buzzbait. Now, the Cavitron buzzbait is real lightweight. And it, I usually like put a trailer hook on the end. This happens to have a red blade. This happens to be a quarter ounce of my favorite one. Now it happens to be black, which is my favorite color. I throw it on at least 20 pound flo uh, fluorocarbon or, or, or monofilament is even my choice. And I always try to use a trailer hook. Again, it's a topwater lure, but it's a spinnerbait too. And I'm throwing it kind of on the same spinnerbait deal as, uh, as, as the rod that I throw with the spinnerbait. It's pretty much the same combination of, of tackle and line. And so again, it's a Roland Martin endorsed uh, buzzbait. Hey, I just use this because I like it. I don't. I even even paid. I, I, I just um, put my name on the back. I haven't even paid to, to do this. I mean, not really. I mean, I just he's a friend of mine. I like the lure. It's really, really a great lure. Okay, number five. We're getting down into the uh, the big time stuff now. One of my favorite techniques for power fishing in the heavy cover and brush and South Florida teal is a frog. Now that's my son is, that is a big deal. These frogs, this happens to be the Spro frog. I don't work for Spro anymore. I used to work for Spro and they make a good frog. I've done a lot of films with uh, Dean Rojas, the guy that created this bronze eye frog right here. And of all the frogs on the market, this bronze eye frog is my favorite. I like that light color because I can watch it better. And that's called the jungle pattern. I, uh, I bend the hooks out just a little teeny bit to get more, uh, better penetration. 
And also with Dean Rojas, what we do, we cut a three quarters of an inch off the skirt. Just cut three, that's like it came out of the package. I just took it out of the package. But if we cut three quarters of an ounce, that's what, how much skirt we end up with. And basically all we do with the frog is a frog is a simple deal. You just throw it on top of the weeds and stuff and just kind of work it slow and easy. Boom, boom, just right through all the lily pads. And it comes through just about anything. I can throw it up in the bank. I can throw it up in those weeds right there. I can throw it way up in there and it just, it won't get hung. It just, it just, I mean, it's just fantastic. I throw it all in the weeds and brush and bad places, and limbs and crawl it along and pull it along. And you'd be surprised what, what comes out of that heavy brush. I mean, big fish. So I'm throwing it on a heavy rod, 65 pound braid. Now recently I found a new kind of frog. It's really kind of cool. This is a buzz frog. Look at this one. And I caught the fool out of them this last couple weeks. And this is a frog. It looks like the, the same size and body and hook arrangement as the spro frog, but it has a little buzz tail. You've heard of the whopper plopper, and that's a great uh, top water plug as well. The whopper plopper has a tail like that. Watch this thing. Watch this thing come across the water. This is a whopper plopper kind of deal. Throw it out there and we'll see, look, look at the tail. The tail is just kind of plopping along. It's just plopping along. I can stop it. It sits there like a frog. I can move it a little bit. I can sit there like a frog. I can run it along and see how the tail just buzzes. That's a buzz tail. That's so cool. That's a buzz tail. You can stop it again and eat it up. I've really done well on this type of frog. So that's really, really a hot choice. Now you're talking about big fish. You're talking about some big, powerful fish hitting, hitting frogs. That's big time. Okay, number five was the frog. Okay, what's number four? Well, number four, you're gonna to have to call a big bass jig. Now, this is my flipping combination. This is for South Florida. I'm throw, throwing it in the lily pads. I'm flipping it in the heavy uh, moss and, and hydrilla. Um, uh, I'm throwing it by any kind of brush or log or any kind of really heavy cover. I'm using si anywhere from 50, 50 to 65 pound braid. I'm using a good Yamamoto type of tail. I'm using anywhere from a half ounce to a one ounce, even a one and a quarter ounce in the real heavy flipping cover. Now, with the jig, a jig, I do a lot of things. I'll flip it like this, like that, right into the edge of the, uh, of the heavy cover, and that's one way to flip it. Okay, the other way is I get right into the, I, I pitch it right into the heavy brush, like right in the lily pads, just right in there. Okay, that's, that's a great way of, of catching fish in the heavy cover. But you can also take a jig, and I do this a lot on the grass lines, and throw it to the edge of the grass lines and just let it sink down. This happens to be a half ounce model. You get it on the bottom, this happens to be a 50 pound braid. And I just kind of crawl it along because it emulates a crawfish. Crawfish are one of the number one food sources, summer or fall or winter or any time. You'll have bass eating crawfish everywhere in the country all year long. So that's what it looks like. It looks like a crawfish. And I, my favorite colors are, of course, this, uh, this black and blue seems to be my favorite color. But a good choice is the green pumpkin as well. Jigs catch big fish. Back in 1980, I had a run of tournaments I, on a jig. I won three BASS tournaments in a row on a jig. So that was my most successful career moment, winning three big giant tournaments in a row, all on a jig. So you can see it's a, it's a big bass combination. Okay, what's the number three lure? This is probably the lure that I've caught the most big fish on this year than any other lure that I have in my whole arsenal of tackle. And this is a swim bait. This is a, actually it's a hardtail grub, a four and a half inch hardtail grub by Yamamoto. It's four and a half inches long. I run it on a great big seven aught uh, hook with a, sc a screw, that's a screw in design. I've just screwed the, screw the hook in, uh, into the worm. That's a screw uh, thing right there. And I put a little bit of an eighth of an ounce lead weight, again on heavy braid. I'm running at least 50, sometimes 65 pound braid. And the way you work a swim bait is easy. Some people like to work it right on top. I don't like to work it on top. That's why I had the weight on there. I like to let it down at three or four feet. And I'm just kind of rolling it along slow and easy. Sometimes I'll come next to the cover like that and I'll drop it to the bottom and just let it hit the bottom. Start to reel again. I'm holding my rod up at kind of a, a worm strike angle. Where if I get a strike, I can drop the rod, go forward like a plastic worm and set the hook that way. And I catch so many beautiful bass on a swim bait. This has to be just really the way to go. If you look at that bait, that, that bait has a really, really good swimming action. That tail is really, really fantastic. Now there's three or four other really good swim baits on the market. I want to show you a couple of them. 
This is the uh, Gambler Series. It's called the Big Easy. It's about the same size as the Yamamoto Hardtail. Here's one by Bass Pro Shop. It's a takeoff of the uh, of the uh, uh, the uh, Kai Tech. The Kai Tech. The Kai Tech company kind of started a lot of these uh, uh, swim baits. And here's a, a 4.8 series Kai Tech. It's pretty much the same size as that Yamamoto. It runs really well. It's about the same dimensions. The tail works really well. It's just a great combination. So all these colors are good. I kind of try to emulate the shad patterns. Okay. We're getting close now. We're down to lure number two. What do you think that lure number two is? Ha 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 ha. Let's go to number two real quick. My number two lure is a lipless crankbait. Let me just show you this one. This happens to be the Aruka Shad. And this Aruka Shad is a lipless crankbait. And going back to when I started to work for Spro to the Lure Company, I started working for Spro. They said, well, Roland, you've worked with Rapplin, you've worked with these other people, what can you do for us? I said, I can design you a good lipless crankbait. So back about 20 years ago, I designed this Spro Aruka Shad for uh, the Spro Corporation. They still use it today. It's one of their best-selling lures, and maybe their best-selling lure. And what it is, it's like a rattle trap. And I don't have to tell you what a rattle trap is. A rattle trap has just been famous forever and ever. Anyway, I came up with this deal here. And it's, it's a little heavier than the half ounce rattle trap. This Aruka Shad is what they call the 5 8 ounce rattle trap. And what I do with that one is, again, I throw it out and sometimes in a hot summertime, you're just reeling in fast as can be. They want a fast moving bait in the summertime because it's hot and they'll chase stuff real quick. In the wintertime, I might take this same Aruka Shad, throw it out, let it sink all the way to the bottom. Let it go sink out all the bottom and just kind of slow roll it again. Just kind of run it slow and easy. Again, those wintertime cold water fish are a lot more lethargic and they want a slower moving lure. But a lipless crankbait catches them in the wintertime. So people would come down to Lake Okeechobee and they'd ask me, they'd say, Roland, I need to catch a fish. How can I catch them? I'd say, well, here's a plastic worm and here's a, a, a rattle trap or an Aruka shad in this case. And I'd say, throw to the edge of the grass beds, go out the close the channel, throw to the edge of the joint grass, the pepper grass, whatever kind of grass there is, and just, just throw it there all day long. Water could be two feet deep, could be five feet deep, didn't make a whole lot of difference. There's fish on the edge of the grass beds and they'll hit a lipless crankbait all year long. It's just a really, really solid, solid lure. It's a lure that works everywhere in the United States. I don't care if it's clear water, dingy water, cold water, hot water, a lipless crankbait is a golden, golden opportunity to catch bass. Okay, what's the number one lure? What's the number one lure of all times? What is, is if, if I just had one lure to fish, what would it be? What, what could it possibly be that would be better than these other nine that I've showed you? It's gonna be the five inch Cinco in a 297 green pumpkin color. The number one lure worldwide. It's outsold every other plastic worm ever. It's the number one lure, the number one bass catching lure in the entire world, period. Nothing's ever come close to the fish that this Cinco has caught. That's the five inch series 297. There's other colors that I like, and this happens to have a little bit of an eighth ounce weight. It happens to a little four aught uh, EWG hook. I'm running on, uh, on some light braid. Throw it right by the dock and just, just let it sit there, just let it sit there, right on the ambush point. And as soon as you think the fish is looking at it, maybe you do it, just twitch it just a little teeny bit. And you catch bass all the time, everywhere, all time of year. It's the number one lure of all times. I can't ever, uh, you can even swim it. There's just so many ways to fish the Cinco. Let me just tell you a little story about uh, when I first uh, got to working with Gary Yamamoto over 20 years ago, about 25 years ago. He came down to Cluis and he had some prototype uh, little Cinco's like this. And he said, Roland, what do you think of this lure? I said, Gary, let me just tell you, that's, that's not gonna make it. That's, that's gonna be a terrible lure. Uh, he said, why? It really catches fish. I said, I don't care if it catches fish, it's ugly. This is just an ugly lure. It's just it, Nobody's going to buy it. They're going to look at that thing and they're going to say it's just terribly ugly. I don't want to buy it. It doesn't have a tail that wiggles. It, it has no contours. It has no, no flash. It doesn't wiggle much. It doesn't do anything. It's just nothing. It's a nothing lure and, and it's not going to sell. <laughs> How wrong have I been? I mean, it's been the number one lure of all times 
and that's just uh, that's just uh, the start of things. From Connecticut, California, from Japan, and all over East and West Africa, every place that there's a bass in the whole world. We were out in Portugal. I was with Gary fishing Portugal and Spain on some international tournaments. Everybody over there was using the Cinco in, in, in Europe. So that's how, how good a lure it is. So folks, that's just my top 10. Again, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the power fishing angle. I can do another top 10 possibly on lighter tackle and lighter lakes and a more open water conditions. And there's other lures to use, don't get me wrong. But that's my top 10. So thanks for watching. And I, I post every Wednesday at, 11, at about six o'clock and I post every Sunday at about six o'clock. I appreciate you watching and please subscribe. Thank you.